This presentation looks at developing good financial procedures. It's about developing a system and making sure that everybody knows how it works and how to use it. In this way, you can look after your group's money well and protect your organisation. It's important to set up a bank account in the name of the organisation, and this is usually needed if you want to apply for funding. Please see our fact sheet for more information. You'll need at least two people to approve transactions. These people are called signatories, and it's a good idea to have three signatories on the account in case someone is unavailable. Make sure that these signatories aren't related or don't live together, as this could make your money less secure and may cause issues when you come to apply for funding. Signatories have to be available and able to sign documents on a regular basis, whether that's paper documents or approving online transactions. If possible, all money coming in and out of your organisation should go through the bank account so that there's a clear record of all transactions. If you're collecting small donations and then spending them within a short time, then you must be very careful to record all transactions. So that is the money coming in and the money going out. This is very important to reassure members that the money is being properly spent and to avoid any confusion about how the money is being used. So to recap on signatories, at least two signatories should sign cheques and people should never sign a blank cheque. At least two signatories should approve all bank transactions. This is known as dual verification. At least two signatories should be needed to set up direct debits or standing orders. And lastly, if you have a debit card, ensure you have clear procedures for its use. This means limiting who can have the card or use the card and having a limit on how much can be spent or withdrawn in one day. On a regular basis, for example, every month, your treasurer, or it could be a member of staff, should check that all the transactions on your bank statement match with your own records. This is called bank reconciliation. Your treasurer should also check the bank balance to make sure that you have enough funds to pay all your financial commitments. It's important to keep a record of all money coming in and going out of the organisation. And you can do this by using a spreadsheet or an accounts book. Money coming into the organisation is called income. And examples of records are award letters from funders, details of any donations, receipts. So if somebody gives you cash, give that person a receipt and keep a copy. Money going out of the organisation is called expenditure. So keep a copy of all receipts and paid invoices. Remember to monitor your spend on a regular basis and be clear about whose role it is to do this. Watch out for any overspending and take action immediately to avoid spending money that you don't have. If there are reasons why a project is more expensive than you've budgeted for, then you could speak to the funder to see if they have any other funds or to explain why you're unable to do what you've said you would do or you could look at how you could bring in additional funds. Also, watch out for any underspending. If you're spending less than you budgeted for, then you could look at what you could do to address this, or if not, then speak to the funder. Most funders are happy to consider a different idea for how you use the money, sometime called a change of use, particularly if your idea still fits with the aims of their fund. For some funders, you'll be reporting to them on a regular basis, so this can be an opportunity to raise any issues. If you do need to speak to funders, then don't leave it to the last minute, but do it in plenty of time and definitely well before the grant ends to avoid having to return funds. In terms of cash transactions, any cash received should be banked as soon as possible. It's a good idea to agree a time frame, for example, within one week. It's important to keep cash transactions to a minimum and not to have large amounts of cash in the office or at someone's home. But it's okay to use cash transactions for small amounts through a petty cash system. So petty cash is small amounts of cash used for small levels of spend that you might make during the day. For example, buying milk and biscuits for a group session or paying volunteer expenses or travel expenses. It's probably easier to manage if you have an office or a community base and good practice to keep it in a locked cash box somewhere secure. For example, in a locked filing cabinet or in a safe. You should also agree how much petty cash will be in the cash box at any one time, depending on the number of expected transactions. For example, £50 or £100, possibly more for bigger organisations. To keep track of the petty cash, keep a petty cash book in with the cash box 
and complete it every time money is put in or taken out. Make sure that if any money is spent, then a receipt for that amount is put in the petty cash box or that there's some kind of paper record, for example, a photocopy of a bus ticket or a signed form from a volunteer. Your treasurer or designated staff member should check the cash box on a regular basis, for example, every fortnight or every month, and check that the amount in the tin matches with the petty cash book. This is called reconciliation. All of this spending should eventually be recorded in your income expenditure sheet. You can decide whether you have to detail every single petty cash transaction or whether you can group some of the expenditure together, depending on whether you have to allocate the spend to different funders. It's good practice for your treasurer to prepare details of income and expenditure to date for each committee meeting. These are called management accounts. Funders may ask to see your management accounts, particularly if you're a new group and don't yet have a set of annual accounts. Financial reports should be an agenda item at every committee meeting. The treasurer should highlight any areas of concern and anything that needs action, and the committee should look at the accounts carefully, ask questions and agree any action required. Remember that all of the committee are responsible for the organisation's money. So get involved, ask questions, make sure you understand what money you have how it's been used and examine the current spends to double check that everything is on track. Each year, your treasurer should prepare an overall summary of the accounts for the last year. These are called annual accounts. These should be presented to your members at your annual general meeting. Even if you're a small organisation with very little income and expenditure, it's important to prepare accounts for each financial year. This may be a requirement within your constitution or governing document, but it also starts to build up your accounting records for your organisation and is often requested by funders. Accounts don't need to show the detail of every transaction, but they need to show the overall income and expenditure for the whole year. And this is usually done under broad headings. For income, it could be grants and trusts or donations. And for expenditure, it could be split into salaries, project costs, running costs, events and volunteering costs. So what to include in your annual accounts? You should include your total income, so all the money that came into your organisation in the last year, and your total expenditure, so all the money that went out of your organisation in the last year. And you should also include the difference between your income and expenditure. This will either be a deficit when you've spent more money than your income, or a surplus when you've brought in more money than you've spent. Your account should also detail what funds you have left. This includes any funds for a specific purpose which have not been spent and which need to be carried forward into the next financial year. These are called restricted funds and any funds which the organisation holds and which have no restrictions on how they can be used in the future. These are called reserves. The financial year usually runs from the 1st of April in one year to the 31st of March in the next year although you can agree your own dates for your own financial year if you wish, as long as everybody is clear. For very small amounts of income and expenditure, you may not need your accounts to be checked by an independent person. However, as you grow bigger as an organisation, you may wish to get an independent person to check over the accounts. For example, someone with bookkeeping experience or a respected person within the community. For bigger organisations or charities, you will have to get your accounts audited by an accountant, so make sure you build this into your running costs and any funding applications. So lastly, let's look at reserves. Reserves are funds that your organisation holds that can be freely used and have no restrictions upon them. And it's good practice to try to build up your reserves as your organisation grows. And this is even more important once you have staff, as you will have legal and financial responsibilities. For example, being able to pay redundancy pay, Bigger organisations often try to have three to six months running costs in their reserves, but they can be difficult to build up. You can try to build them up through donations, fundraising, income generation, or by adding management fees into funding applications. But if you do this, read the criteria very carefully, as not all funders will fund management fees. And usually this has to be kept to a minimum, for example, 5% of the total application.